not sure why it's not performing as well for me but not super happy with these so far we're going to enjoy these but i don't know that i'll grow it again what's up lazy dog fam hope all y'all are having a wonderful day it is tuesday june 27th here in south georgia Today we're going to be spending a little time in the raised bed garden here behind me. We've got some raised bed sweet taters that we need to heal or mound up a little bit. We've got a bunch of delicious cherry tomatoes we need to harvest. Then we're going to skip over to this plot right over here, show you some beautiful squash plants, and tell you about my favorite variety of zucchini. So based on the advice from the fine folks that steal sweet potato plants, we've been trying to make a conscious effort to grow our sweet taters in a mound or to heal them up a little more this year. So we've got these Georgia Jets mounded up nicely in this short little piece of a row and those plants are looking good, starting to run a little bit. And we also made some mounds when we planted these two rows of Orleans sweet potatoes. Those are taking off pretty well. About time to side dress those with some potassium and heal them up a little more. And a few days ago, I added some compost to this bed where we have the bunch Puerto Rico variety growing. This is a variety that doesn't vine as much as those other varieties. Great variety for raised beds or containers. These plants are looking pretty good. Got a little bit of insect pressure on them there, but the color of the leaves looks good. We got them mounted up tall there. And so today we need to do the same thing in this bed right here where we have more of that bunch Puerto Rico variety growing. Now these took a little bit of a beating during that last storm when we had a cucumber trellis in this bed fall over into this bed and it smooshed these plants a little bit. But they're recovering pretty well. Still got some collards in here. They're getting eaten up by the bugs pretty bad. Haven't really sprayed these. Just been kind of feeding them to the chickens, seeing how long or how deep into the summer I can keep them alive. So today what we want to do is take some of this compost and make a mound around these sweet potato plants here. I'm not going to put compost over the entire bed, just in the middle there to make a mound around those plants, much like we did over there in that bed. Now before we start mounding or healing these, I think I will sprinkle a little bit of Nature Safe 855 just to side dress them one more time. I did the same thing with that other raised bed, so I figured I'd do it here as well. Now we can start adding some compost. What I'm trying to do here is not necessarily cover up a ton of this plant material. Just want to make a mound here, so I'm kind of directing the vines over that way. We can add a lot of soil right here. Then we can pull the vines back over this way, add some more soil on the other side. So I don't know if we'll use this entire wheelbarrow load of compost. We'll just have to see how much we need here. So I'm just going to kind of shovel it along the row. Just like that right there, kind of delicately, making me a nice little mound there. Now that we've got that side done, I'm gonna kind of train these plants back over this way a little bit, if I can, if I can get them to stay there. And we'll add some compost here on this side. And so now that we've got the compost on both sides, I've just kind of been pushing it up a little bit, get these plants a little more upright like that. And now it looks just like that other bed over there. So hopefully doing that will give us a little better harvest than we would normally get if we just left them planted on the flat. I'm pretty optimistic about my sweet taters in these raised beds here considering how good our regular taters did back there in the back. I'm hoping for a pretty big harvest, but we won't know until we start digging them probably in another two months or so. I'd have to go back and look at my exact planting date. All right, now that we've got the sweet potato plants situated, we've got a ton of these orange Torangina cherry tomatoes to harvest here. I feel like we just picked these a couple days ago and we've got a bunch more to harvest today. Our little co-planting situation with these white swan marigolds is working pretty well. I don't know that it's taking a whole lot of pest pressure off the tomatoes, but it sure does look pretty. We've been pruning these back so they don't get too tall on us and try to outgrow these tomato plants. Probably need to give these a little juice 
later today these plants can stand to be a little more green but anyway let's harvest what we got here see what we get and probably have some snacks along the way all right so a nice little harvest on those especially considering the fact we just picked them a couple days ago now let's mosey on over here to this last round raised bed and check on these edox cherry tomatoes now this edox variety seems to be a good bit later than the torangina for whatever reason just starting to get some good fruits some good ripe fruits on these you can see some red ones down in there i think there's a lot of production to come we're loaded up at the top there even got a bird's nest in there can you see down in there birds have made them a little home in there i've just left it they don't seem to be eating a lot of my fruits still got that one runt plant down here it's got a few on it it just never took off so let's grab these here what few we have and we'll kind of compare these two varieties all right so you can see a huge difference there with what we got from those two torangina plants versus those two edox plants so thus far this edox variety really hasn't impressed me a whole lot the fruits do taste really good i'll give it that but the production just hasn't been there so far they seem to be a little more susceptible to some insect problems see those little yellow spots on those those look like leaf footed bug stings to me now the edox variety may turn the corner and we may get a lot of good late production from it but as of now it's not a variety that i would probably grow again we have had several subscribers say they grew this variety and they were really impressed with it. Not sure why it's not performing as well for me, but not super happy with these so far. We're going to enjoy these, but I don't know that I'll grow it again. But these Torangina cherry tomatoes continue to impress me. With all that rain we had and we harvested these two days ago, I think I saw maybe two or three that had split, which was really surprising. You get that much rain, a lot of times these cherry tomatoes will split on you. I don't have any splits in this little container right here. And they just continue to be super, super productive and really, really tasty. Now, one important thing to mention about this Torangina variety that a lot of our subscribers have noted over the last year and a half when we talk about this particular variety, these have more of a citrusy flavor as opposed to just a sweet sugary flavor. So if you've ever had a sun gold cherry tomato, it's kind of what these taste like. They don't taste like a sun sugar, which tends to be more sweet, less citrusy. So if you like that kind of citrusy kick, you'll like these Torangina tomatoes. If you're more of a fan of the sun sugar just the sweet tomatoes you might not care for this one as much as we do and finally as promised i want to show you these beautiful squash plants here and if i wouldn't have told you you would have never known that these plants right here got beaten battered by some high winds some pretty good sized hail and about 12 to 15 inches of rain they just took a licking and kept on ticking they're looking great we did lose this one plant right there but the rest of these couldn't look any better so for these few plots on the front of the property that we've converted to no-till over the last few years, I've noticed how certain plants really thrive in these no-till spots and other plants just kind of do like they normally would in any other plot. I've noticed specifically that pumpkins and squash, for whatever reason, really love these no-till plots. We had some pumpkins, I think, maybe two years ago in that middle no-till plot the biggest pumpkin jungle I think I've ever had. And these squash plants here are another indication of that. We only put down some pre-plant fertilizer there for those plants. We haven't been pushing them a whole lot, but yet they look wonderful. And I think it's time to harvest some fruits. So let's start out by getting some of these Pantheon zucchini here. These could stand to get a little bit bigger, but it's been a while since I've had any of these and I've been studying on it quite a bit. Now for these, I usually do, to take some pruners and cut those off. Sometimes you can kind of damage the plant a little bit by twisting them. You can see the size on that right there. It can stand to be a little bit bigger. That's good eating size right there. And it looks like we've got two more down here. That looks like a twin right there. Those are conjoined together. I thought it was two separate ones. See if I can get that off of there. There we go. Well, twin zucchini. All right, so we didn't get a boatload there. I did pick some of those kind of small just because I got a hankering to eat some more of them. 
That might be enough for supper tonight, but I think we can top it off with a few of these grand prize yellow squash in here. All right, now we're talking. Those little baby squash there should be mighty tender and delicious tonight. I did find one squash bug in there as I was picking those. I squished it. I also found some eggs right there. So although these plants may not be showing any problems, we'll have to keep an eye out for those squash bugs. They get real bad this time of year. So for those of you who may not have been following closely, I'll give you a little background on this Pantheon variety here. So several years ago, I think it was in one of those middle plots over there, we were doing a second planting of squash and zucchini. We asked for suggestions, what people would like to see us grow. A lot of people recommended growing Costata, Romanesca, zucchini, or squash, which I had never grown before. So I got a pack of just a standard heirloom open pollinated Costata Romanesca, and then I also found this hybrid version on Johnny's website. I figured it'd be a great time to kind of compare the heirloom versus the hybrid. Well, the hybrid, the Pantheon here, kind of blew the doors off the open pollinated version, and we've been growing this stuff ever since. And since I grew this Pantheon variety for the first time several years ago, I really haven't grown any traditional green zucchini since. We only grow these if we're planting zucchini. If you've never had these Costata Romanesca types, they've got a little firmer texture and a little more nuttier flavor than a traditional green zucchini. A lot of times what we do with these is we just cut them up in little wedges, coat them in a little oil, a little salt and pepper, put them in the air fryer, 10 minutes or so later you've got a delicious little side dish so these are great if you've never tried them i'd highly recommend them but anyway it's time for me to go inside and change shirts for the third time today this humidity is absolutely ridiculous out here hope you enjoyed the video today don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website lazydogfarm.com and if you want to hear more about succession planting squash which we do a lot of during the warm season down here check out this video right here we'll kind of talk about how we plan those successions and how we pick different varieties for those succession plantings as it gets hotter so check that out we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm